Hi, my name's Dr. Ranj, and I'm sure, like me, you think that nurses all do an amazing job when it comes to looking after us when we're poorly. But did you know that it was actually Florence Nightingale's pioneering work over 100 years ago that has made nursing the respectable and rewarding profession that it is today? And also, did you know that Florence had to fight for many years to be allowed to become a nurse, which is all she ever wanted to do? Well, here she is to tell us about those struggles that she had to overcome, and I'm so glad she did. Florence Nightingale was born on the 12th of May 1820 in the city of Florence in Italy. It was this remarkable woman who would change the face of nursing forever. Let's take a look at her life. Good day. I don't suppose I need much of an introduction, but my name is Florence Nightingale, or you may know me as the Lady of the Lamp. Now, Florence was an unusual name for a girl back then, but you see, my parents named me after the place I was born. I had one sister. Dear Parthenope, who was also named after her birthplace, the city of Naples. Now I spent my childhood between two houses, Leehurst in Derbyshire and here at Embley Park in Hampshire. Back then it was unusual for girls to go to school, but I was fortunate enough to be taught at home by my father and it was here I discovered my love of learning. I particularly liked mathematics. I adored my studies and was an avid reader. From earliest childhood I was always interested in caring for others and I would often accompany my mother to the village to bring medicine, food and comfort to our sick neighbours. However, as I grew up it became clear that my parents expected me to marry a rich gentleman instead of going to university or having a career. Despite my privileges, I became deeply unhappy and I felt trapped by my parents' and society's expectations. It was here underneath this beautiful tree that I had a message from God. I had a higher calling in life. I was put on this earth to help people. A few years later, I was drawn to nursing. I would help the hungry and sick. However, when I told my parents, they were not amused. You see, in my day, hospitals were dirty and disgusting, and the nurses who worked there were uneducated drunkards. My parents did not want me to become a nurse, so I decided to study nursing in secret. My parents sent me travelling around Europe as a distraction. I continued to study as I went, and it was on my travels that I met Sidney Herbert, a rich English gentleman. Now, we'll come back to him later in my story. I returned home to England, this time accompanied by a beautiful little owl I rescued in Athens. I aptly named her Athena. I was more determined than ever to make a career out of nursing. My parents were very upset when I continued to turn down several marriage proposals, including one from the rather successful journalist Richard Monckton Milnes. However, I felt my work was more important than marriage. Fourteen years since I sat under the tree here at Embley and was called into God's service, I finally was able to persuade my parents to let me train to be a nurse at Kaiserwerth in Germany. This was a Lutheran institution where young middle-class ladies could learn teaching or nursing. I studied here for three months and I learned how to bathe patients, make beds and I even observed operations. Oh, I was as happy as the day is long. Finally, I could focus on what I was put on this earth to do. When I returned to London, I took up a job at the Harley Street Hospital for Gentlewomen. Here I was given £500 a year to live on by my father. At Harley Street, I was the lady superintendent. I was in charge of the budget and the organisation of the hospital. Soon after, in 1853, the Crimean War broke out between Russia and Turkey. In 1854, Britain and France sent troops to help the Turks. 
The battles were fierce and bloody, with many men dying of malnutrition and sickness. There was short supply of nurses at the front, but who was now Secretary of State for War? But my old friend, Sidney Herbert. After I received his letter asking for help at Scutari Hospital, I started to interview women to join my party of nurses. I interviewed 200 women, but only 38 were suitable. Most of them were nuns, not nurses at all, but I knew that they would listen and take orders. The journey to Turkey was horrendous, and I was terribly seasick. But what we encountered at the doors of Scutari Hospital was unlike anything we had ever encountered before. It was absolutely disgusting. The toilets were blocked, and the soldiers lay on the floor in their own filth. Rats and fleas were everywhere, and vomit and bloody rags covered the floor. I was ready to get to work, but we were met by some rather disgruntled doctors, particularly Dr John Hall, who felt that the hospital was no place for a woman. I decided to pour all of my energy into cleaning the hospital. We swept, scrubbed, mopped, bought new beds, repaired pillows and blankets, got rid of the rats and the fleas, and unblocked the toilets. The conditions in the hospital greatly improved, and the doctors started to realise how valuable nursing was. We replaced soiled bandages and bathed the patients. The men started to get better. I often worked 20 hours a day and was seen wandering along the four-mile rows of beds with my lantern late at night. This is where I got my nickname, the Lady of the Lamp. I would check on the men when all of the other nurses had gone to bed and it was said that the men would reach up out of their beds and kiss my shadow as I walked by. However, all this dedication to my patients took its toll on my health and I was suddenly struck down by Crimean fever and although I recovered, I was haunted with ill health for the rest of my life. The war ended on the 30th of March 1856. Now, since I'd gone away, I'd become quite famous. Much to my dismay, I didn't like the buzz fuzz around my name. So I decided to travel home under the name of Miss Smith. And it worked. I managed to get home to Derbyshire anonymously. And I walked the rest of the journey from the station to my beloved Leehurst on foot. Although the Crimean War had ended, this was no time to rest, and I set about laying the foundations of nursing. I was determined that the mistakes of the Crimean War would not be repeated, and I set to write a formal report. I used statistical diagrams to illustrate my findings, and I called these diagrams coxcombs. Thanks to the generous public, who raised over £44,000, I set up the Nightingale Training School at St Thomas's Hospital. Finally, nursing had become a respectable profession. I also spent my time writing, and my first book, Notes on Nursing, was published in 1860 with its primary message being that preventing sickness through cleanliness, ventilation and a healthy diet was much better than a cure. It was a bestseller, with 15,000 copies being sold in the first month of publication. I moved to South Street in Mayfair and lived there for the rest of my life, spending time between there and Claydon House in Buckinghamshire, where my beloved sister Parthenope lived with her husband, Harry Verney. In my later years, I became the first woman to receive the Order of Merit from King Edward VII, and the second woman to be awarded the Honorary Freedom of the City of London. At her home in South Street, on the 13th of August 1910, Florence Nightingale died in her sleep, aged 90. Following her wishes, Florence's family declined a burial at Westminster Abbey, and instead she was buried in her family's plot at St Margaret's Church near Embley Park, with a public memorial service attended by many nurses held at St Paul's Cathedral. However, 
Today, Florence Nightingale's legacy lives on as she continues to inspire countless generations of new nurses and is celebrated at the Florence Nightingale Museum in London.